one of you even know? Um, right then, so um, agenda. What we're going to do is we sent the agenda out earlier, but we've got some great speakers, all RSVIP members as well. Um, first of all, I want to thank Matt Davis, who um, is is here he's just waved and if you this is Matt who is actually behind the scenes on the technical side of things and he is going to be managing the zoom account for us tonight setting everything up and um, hopefully it'll run as smoothly as possible let's not blame Matt if anything goes wrong <laughs> you can blame, blame me if zoom. you want you can blame me yeah, if you let's want. blame zoom if anything goes wrong or we lose connection it's zoom's fault not Matt's um, but yeah, if anyone's got any questions about anything technical, put it on the group chat or if you're having any problems and Matt will try and advise you of what to do if you do lose anything along the way. Um, so agenda, going to Vicky Victoria Taylor as well, who's here, give us a wave Vic. So some of you will be familiar with Vicky from our events as well. She um, is part of team RSVIP. And Vicky also does our live streaming for us at the events, interviews members, so some of you may have been interviewed by Vicky in the past at our events. Um, so um, Vicky's going to sort of be my joint facilitator tonight um, and hop on and off, aren't you, as, as we go really. So we've got speakers then, so we've got, um, I'm going to run through a few things first and then Vicky's going to take over um, uh, from there and talk to us about um, what uh, different, different key things that she's been uh, working on recently and also the experiential side of digital. Um, and then we're going to go and uh, go on to Matt Davis, who is a brand consultant and a strategy expert in the branding world and he's going to share some tips for us. Um, on how we can uh, improve, well, how, how we can actually adapt really at the moment in these changing times and testing times that we're finding ourselves in um, on the branding side for our businesses and how we can plan ahead as well for when things start to get a bit better. Uh, then we're going to move on to Paul Stafford from Cloudworks, who's going to help us to uh, and give us some informative ideas and share his tips on remote working. Uh, Cloudworks is an IT technical company based in Nottingham as well, so I can't recommend them enough. They've been really helpful for us uh, over this past year, especially because I'm not, I am pretty much a tech phobe uh, and don't know what I'm doing most of the time. So uh, <laughs> Paul's been really helpful um, along the way with lots of things in that area. So he's gonna um, do a bit of a talk later on. And then we've got Mark Smith from uh, the brand strategy um, and also Red Bus. Um, I think he was previously known as, more the brand strategy now, uh, a fellow alumni fellow of mine of Nottingham Trent University as well, also going to be covering branding. And then we're going to go on to a bit more personal stuff, health and well-being. So the first section will be about business and how we can adapt our businesses in the current climate. And then we're going to move on to ourselves um, and how we can take care of ourselves at the moment, because after all, you can't pour from an empty cup. And if you're not well and not looking after yourself, then, uh, you know, in, your business isn't going to thrive either, is it? Let's, let's face it. So we're going to move on to Eva Humphreys from Whole Food Warrior, who's going to give us some tips on how to stay healthy um, during this time and some uh, immune boosting tips as well there. And then Mike Lawrence, we've got, who is a holistic therapist. Hi, Mike. Um, is going to take us through how to look after our mental health and well-being during the COVID-19. Uh, and then finally, we're going to come to Lisa, give us a wave, Lisa, from Things to Do in Nottinghamshire, who is going to talk to us about um, things that we can do, activities and entertainment to keep ourselves occupied and the kids as well, if you've got kids at home. So that's a lot. We're going to get finished, like I say, we're going to power through. Um, we're going to try and get finished, or we'll get finished by eight o'clock. So it'll be around the normal time of our as our event would have happened. Um, so I just want to. I've got a little message from Louise. Um, she's she was supposed to be here, but I don't think I see her at the moment. She was going to log on. Um, she's from Reese. She's the general manager of Reese, who was supposed to host us tonight. And she just wanted to pass on her regards to everybody and say, you know, she's really sorry that it didn't work out for us being there tonight. Um, however, they are looking forward to having us a bit later on in the year. And also, uh, they are also extending the offer that they were going to do 
in store tonight for us all, which I believe is 25% off online. So if anybody wants any retail therapy during this time, then uh, <laughs> that offer is still going. <laughs> Uh, then our other guys at Olivia's Townhouse as well um, for our event that we were supposed to be hosting at Reese. We've got Jessica Walker online now. Hi Jess. Hello, how are you all right? Hi, yeah, yeah, good, thank you. So Olivia's Townhouse, a brand new cocktail bar in Nottingham, we're supposed to be sponsoring tonight's event with canapes and Prosecco. Um, and so um, obviously that's not happening, but they are hosting us in August later on this year, which hopefully all of this palaver will be over by then and we'll be able to come down to the bar and be back as normal so um just just wanted to say a few words didn't you just you're are you in newcastle right now is that right i am yes because our um our head office is based in newcastle obviously we've got the uh, the venue in nottingham there but uh but yes obviously it's all been a bit of a strange time from, from our side of it um we closed all the bars last weekend obviously following uh, that, that announcement there yeah. Um, so it was sad, but we, we very quickly got used to the idea, um, and more importantly, we're just kind of, you know, building and getting ready for that big relaunch, that big moment of reopening again and making a lot of noise, hopefully in that, that summertime, um, from our side of it as well, we're kind of reaching out to um, any companies that we've already got contacts with and just saying, you know, it's probably not on your radars as yet, but certainly mm. when everyone gets back to normal working life, you know, we've got to mm. open our doors with people wanting to hold a bit of a back to work party and celebration, um, you know, and just get everyone's spirits nice and high again. So, um, mm. but yes, Olivia's obviously is a, um, is so new to Nottingham that it, it has come at a little bit of a sad time, but if anything, it's just going to refuel us for that, that big moment when we can obviously get back in action and obviously you know make some great contacts in Nottingham. Absolutely thank you Jess and we're looking forward to coming to you in August definitely and it's like I say it's a shame it's not happening but it can't be helped right now under government law we are on lockdown now so uh, obviously we're having to adapt and that takes us really to our next sort of slot which talks about adaptation and how we're going to do that and most of the speakers tonight are going to be talking about that in their speak in their talks about how we can adapt and change and deal with change um, and quite quickly as well because we've had to deal with it quite quickly um, and so so Vicky how have you found things as well at the moment lately with this side of things with the, with the adaptation because we had a chat about this the other day didn't we we did, yeah. I mean, first of all, I'll say this week for me has been, I've smiled and I've cried and I've smiled and I've cried and I've done all of those things within the space of about 10 minutes every single day. Um, we, I, I think it's, it's not just, it's obviously not just business, you know, we're, we're rallying around here, sort of getting volunteer teams together and there's all, there's all kinds of stuff happening that impacts business and it's you know first and foremost we've got to go into crisis management for clients um and and help them with their channels so i work i do work with social media strategy i work with customer experience strategy and i also work with a bit of management as well on some of my clients that i work with so predominantly i have I have been on pretty much 24 seven for the last week, managing different messages, um, very worried clients. And I think that has been, that's been the biggest thing. And I'm sure all of you deal with clients in, you know, very similar ways. Everybody's got clients, but we're navigating not only, we're not just talking about, you know, what can we do digitally? How can we create experiences? How are you feeling today? And that changes from day to day. Um, when you've got people applying for bank loans and all kinds of stuff, it's, it's been a, a very very challenging week but one that I will be glad to get the, the end of tomorrow um, I think I, I think like to, to try and simplify it I mean is, has everybody here got Facebook accounts I'm assuming and Twitter accounts and everybody's on all the socials yeah I think what what we've been doing more than anything is we have been making people laugh that's really pulled us through this week mm. we've been trying to help people through with humor with our accounts um, and it has worked um, but what we've been doing is over engaging more than ever talking mm. to people more than ever um asking not just engaging with customers about products or services engaging with them and asking them how are they how are you feeling how are you doing are you okay um and actually the, one of my clients has seen an upturn in sales this week um and i, I think it is because we have over 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 delivered and we've over engaged and we've we've really really continued to build relationships 
And right. I, you know, I firmly believe that's why right now, touch wood, we don't know what's going to happen, but that I, I still have the clients that I have um, because I, I've built very, very strong relationships. So what I would say is during this time, whatever situation anybody is in, whether you are struggling right now, um, whether you're waiting for government funding, whether you are fined financially, is there is an opportunity right now to there are more eyeballs on digital media than there have ever been because everybody is at home so there are eyeballs but it's not just about eyeballs and i'm seeing really generic content going out that's saying there's eyeballs get the eyeballs and it's like <laughs> actually there are eyeballs but how do we connect with those people right now because we're not just they're not just numbers they're all people that are all going through this crisis at the same time that we're going through this crisis so if you think about how you're using social media right now, how you're using digital media, you know, if you ask yourselves in the past week, how, what, I, I'll throw that out to everyone actually, what have, what have you engaged with the most over the last sort of week? What's made you feel good over the last week? Mm. Um, I mean, <clears throat> just looking at, oh, can everyone still see me? There we go. Feel free to use the um, comments box, guys, on here as well, because obviously you are muted, remember, but yeah, um, just ask that question again, Vicky. Yeah, just saying what, what's made everyone feel good, because, you know, very often we're talking about just business strategy, which is still important. I want to say that, right, because there's a lot of people putting stuff out there at the moment saying that brand business strategy out the window. I absolutely disagree. We still yeah. need to be absolutely talking about our brands right now, 100%. Absolutely. Yeah. But, but and I think hand, handle it oh. with a bit of empathy and to mix it, mix it in with other stuff as well. So I would just say what, what is making everybody smile this week? Well, I can see, story. well, Matt's put things like WhatsApp jokes, funny videos. I think we're all kind of can be, um, I think we're all in agreement that there's some hilarious videos going around at the moment um, on social media, especially. And they've been really uplifting, some of them. Some of them have just been pure funny. Um, and I think it's distracting us from what's really going on at the moment, isn't it? And it's nice to see that people, it's a serious situation. It's not something that we should make light of, but at the same time, um, you know, we have to, as we said before, take care of our mental health. And also, you know, we are on lockdown. We're inside the house a lot now. Um, and I think, you know, people are starting to go stir crazy. Um, and you've got to get outside. And Mike will speak about this, I'm sure, later on. Um, but being able to um, look at these videos and to talk on social media with each other, it's communication. And I think we're all in this together. And it reminds us all that everybody is going through the same thing at the same time. Um, and it's it's that kind of community um, and support. So we, we've got things like a lot of people are saying social media, humour on the live chat right now, conversations yeah. with Vicky. Oh, that's nice, Adrian. Oh, thank, thanks, Adrian. <laughs> Talking to friends more than you would normally do. Apps, house party yeah. app that we were speaking about earlier. Yeah. I would, so I would take all of those things that you've mentioned there and none of those things probably relate to your business or you've ever seen that they've related to your business before. What I would say more than ever right now is that they're really important because we're fundamentally, we're all human beings and if, if a brand can empathize and actually tap into where we are right now. You know, we're putting out completely different messages from clients right now. If we were just talking about product right now, it, I believe, um, and, and like I say, this is something that we navigate, and, and let me say, this is not a blanket approach. Every single person is different. So you, you really need to navigate this gently. But the things that are making you feel fulfilled and full of joy right now will also make your audiences feel fulfilled and full of joy because we're all going, there has never been a time, if you think about in our lives, we have all gone through our own individual crises through our lives. Right now we're going through a collective crisis. So we know that everyone is experiencing this together. So it's not that anybody is away from this, we're all in it. So I think you can, you can assume that there is going to be things that we can all resonate with and it is a case of testing things um, but I would say that having that level of empathy and you're quite right Fiona and that comes down to the messaging that you're putting out as well if you are putting out funny content then you know preface that content by saying stuff like you know we all need a smile right now and you know to make it sensitive so it's not just here we go let's just laugh at Boris Johnson or whatever we're laughing at 
let's just preface that carefully and make sure that we're putting the right messaging with that right now. And this all seems like really, really simple stuff. And effectively, you know, it is. But as a business, if you haven't been doing this before, you know, I am somebody that puts, I don't put my entire life on Instagram, but I am somebody that's quite comfortable jumping on here and, and talking to people and not everybody is. Um, mm. But I would say try and become comfortable with it. And if you can put yourself out there a little bit more right now, people are going to get to know you better. This is a perfect time for people to get to know you better because there are multiple people out there and people connect with humans. And right now, human connection is something we don't have physically. So you can do that digitally. Um, Absolutely. And it goes back to the fundamental basics of networking, which is building relationships and getting to know the person behind the brand, um, not just the brand itself. People buy people, as we know, that very quite overused phrase but uh, nevertheless it's overused because it's spot on and I think you know we have to always remember that when we're networking this is why we've made such a success out of our SVIP over the years with our events because people want to meet each other face to face people want to connect people want to engage they want to get to know each other they want to find commonalities um, and all of these things bring us together as people as humans you know completely agree yeah completely so agree. um can i just say something fiona someone's Go just for it. a very amusing uh, comment um we've just noticed that alex lees has joined us yes um, hi alex steve said uh, the fact that you know we're talking about things that make them smile like the fact that the video guy alex lee has joined with no video feed ha, ha. <laughs> that's ironic alex where are you where's your where's your face <laughs> he hasn't brushed is, his is hair he in his, today is he in his pajamas <laughs> For those of you who don't know, Alex is our new videographer at RSVIP. He's been with us this year, joined us in January. Absolutely amazing. Um, and he is the guy that you might have seen with the futuristic equipment walking around that almost looks like, well, I can't, yeah, yeah it, it's, it's uh, amazing. But yeah, so look out for Alex at the next event, whenever that may be. Can I just, can yeah, I just thanks. make a point, Fiona, yeah. before we carry on? Yeah. Look at Steve. Look at Steve's background. I know. Put a networking event in the background. I know. Thanks, okay. Steve. I love your efforts there. Again, you can tell Steve. <laughs> Steve's our photographer at RSVIP. Amazing. Um, and you can very much tell as well. Yeah. <laughs> great. Hi, Caroline. Caroline's just joined us as well. So great. Okay. So um, let, let's move on because I, I think we've we've got quite a bit to bit to go through. So. Um, Vicky, did you want to um, did you want to do your slot, or was that your slot, or did you want to come back to that? Well, I think like all I would say is that for the you know if anybody really that's an overall view. I'm, I could yeah. sit here and talk for hours. I'm not going to yeah, do yeah. that. Um, but if anybody does want to reach out and chat um, and talk, um, I'm you know I am making myself available. Um, I you know I have been doing some free bits of consultation no charge right now you know 20 30 minutes on the phone on that is not a problem at all um because it's hard to apply it to all businesses and say right this is the right way to go but you know i've, I've done that with a few from the network um if anybody does want to just sort of thank take you so much for that Vicky. that's really kind of you to give up your time like that to do that so um and you were also talking about doing some uh, social media masterclasses if people were interested in those weren't you as well potentially but having reflected on it i think it needs to be at right now and having spent this week i think we need to handle it more carefully and take yeah. and take each case individually so i think right now um Fair enough. maybe a couple of weeks down the line let's see how things go but i think right now it needs to be a bit more one-on-one -on -one. yeah yeah so one anyone's interested in a one-to-one -one chat over the phone or zoom yeah. with vicky yeah. um, and she is help. offering her time yeah. at no charge at the moment to help and support and after all this this is this was kind of my motivation for doing this tonight was you know how do you take an event that is normally face to face as we all know what the format of our SVIP is normally it's very relaxed we're always in a bar or a restaurant we look after you very well with drinks and food and things like that it's by your own tonight obviously <laughs> um but you know it, it's very how do you take something like that and put it online and obviously it's about, like I said before, adapting your business to go online. And not all businesses are adaptable to go online. There are a few that perhaps will struggle with that. But the majority, I would say, probably can do something to take themselves online and use the platforms and the digital space that we've got access to. It's amazing. Um, and I myself am, am kind of guilty of, 
staying in my comfort zone a little bit I've known that I've needed to get onto video for a long time especially with what I do and I, I've not avoided it and I have done it but I perhaps haven't done it as much as I should have done so I think sometimes a silver lining out of the times that we're going through and the negative times we're going through is that it pushes us to do things that we wouldn't ordinarily do um, to, to stay relevant and to stay current because now more than ever it's so important for us to stay connected and as I said before with networking it's great to network face to face but we we don't necessarily need to be face to face to do it all we do, we're doing right now we're connecting and we're engaging and we're chatting and um, I'm hoping that everybody will get something out of tonight by the time it finishes if you take one thing away from tonight and it's been a success and keeping in contact for like Vicky says personally for our own mental health so that we're actually a lot of us are freelancers people with small teams we're working from home remotely at the moment it can be a lonely space anyway being self-employed but right now it's even more isolating so staying um, in touch remotely and using platforms like zoom and other platforms which i'm sure that paul will talk to us about um later on are really really important and and it maintains those relationships as vicky said as well um, uh, we need to strengthen existing relationships and make new ones but really my main reason for doing tonight was how can we support one another through what we're going through because this is temporary this won't last forever so however long this lasts whether it's weeks or a matter of months we will get back to normal eventually and then we'll go about our jobs again we'll go about our businesses obviously we'll have to um we will have adapted quite considerably and so there will be a, a building up process again no doubt for many businesses to get back to even what we were before but ultimately like i say we're all in this together and it's and and i i don't know about you but we're seeing a lot of community spirit at the moment of people supporting one another on social media and wanting to help and offering their help because it almost seems appropriate inappropriate to do self-promotion at the moment um, and I think there's a way around it. I think we all need to still pay our bills. We all need to keep our businesses going and we must self-promote, but there's a way in which to go about it and to do it. I think, you know, you touched on that, Vicky, and I think it is important to um, remember that we are all in business together. We're all here. We want to keep our businesses going, of course, but um, we don't want to do it in a salesy way. So how do we go about doing it and keeping relevant and keeping in contact and keeping in touch? And I think it again goes back to that age old um, basic networking question of how can I help you? Definitely. And just on that front, everybody, if I may segue into the, a little bit later yeah. on in our agenda, we've got some, we're going to try something with you all. Mwahaha. This is <laughs> my, uh, my power, you know, is probably too great really, to be honest. But what we're going to do is we're going to divide you into little breakout rooms. Um, depending on how many people are here, maybe four or five people, maybe even three people in each breakout room a bit later. Um, and then that will allow you to have a kind of a virtual networking experience whereby hopefully you can ask each other that question, how can we help each other um, and yeah. uh, discuss some things. So we might do that for five, 10 minutes and then I'll call you all back into this kind of, uh, into this kind of room here where we're all together for Fiona to sum up. But that's a bit later on. So I'll... Uh, yeah. Thanks, Matt. No, that's great. Right, I'm going to try something now. And um, <laughs> Matt and I were practicing this earlier. I will be honest, because, like I say, we're all we're all friends. Um, we've been uh, <laughs> we've been practicing the whole professional slide thing. So our next speaker uh, is Matt. So I'm going to just see whether or not this works now. Let's see if we can get this on to do a little intro for him. I don't think it is. <laughs> don't worry if it's not. Yeah. Oh, there it is. There it is. It's working. There we are. Is it working? It's so it's Matt Davis, brand consultant. So he's going to take us through five tips on brand leadership during a crisis. Um, I've known Matt now for about well less than a year. Matt, we met at Nottingham Trent University originally, didn't we? We were doing a joint project in um, helping out part of the alumni fellowship scheme, and we were mentoring some of the students. Yep. Um, that's where we initially met. We then connected on social media, LinkedIn, which is how it usually happens, and stayed in touch from there. And then Matt did the amazing thing recently of putting a shout out on LinkedIn to just say, I want to help you. 
um, get in touch if you need any support. This is what I do. So I dropped him a quick line. I let, I let him know what we what I was thinking of doing with, with taking our SBIP events online temporarily. And here he is now helping us and facilitating this, uh, this event. So this is how it happens. The power of networking online has already brought us all here tonight. Um, so, so Matt, take it away. Okay, well, um, thank you very much, Fiona. Um, do you want to um, unshare your screen, perhaps? And then, um, unfortunately, then people will be looking at me, but um, that, might be, that might be good. Yeah, no, I guess that came a little bit from what Vicky was saying, which was like, now is the time that we pull together and we help each other. Um, and I think, you know, I don't know if everybody, has everybody, uh, raise your hand if you've heard of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. It's kind of a standard kind of like... Um, you know, psychological profiling kind of uh, oh, yeah. tool. Have you heard of that? So it starts, basically the, the premise is that you, you can't move up this, there's about, there's five. So you go from physiological, which is like food, water, warmth. Then you go into safety, security, et cetera. Then you go into belongingness, um, being part of a group. And then you look for esteem within the group. And then you look for self-actualization, which is where basically, you, you know, you really try and live into your identity. So. Maslow basically suggested that we we can't we we can't kind of move up a rung until the previous rung is basically um, in place. So I think what um, what I'm going to talk about now is is about really about being real with people, right? So the the thing is is that you know previously in our Western world we were so blessed with everything we could ever imagine, and we we're really operating at that top end of Maslow's little chart like with you know self-actualization you know live into your identity be who you want to be uh, which was great you know and we've we've had a great time but obviously in the last few days weeks um that has come crashing down and re realistically we're back down right in the physiological and the safety area of maslow's hierarchy you know mm -hmm. people are are looking after their families you know and that's that's it food toilet roll right these things that um, previously we take for granted are now so important to us. So I think that's that's really what I want to sort of talk about is 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 that I've got five kind of areas. So hard to to really um, you know nail it down as Vicky sort of said, and I know Mark's going to take on some some cool stuff later. So there may be a tad bit of crossover, but um, perhaps not. I don't know. Uh, we'll see how it goes. So Mark, sorry if I uh, if I steal your thunder on a couple of bits, but I'm sure you know we attack things differently. So hopefully that'll be fine. So no one knows the future. Um, everybody's situation is different, as Victoria has said. So take this with that in mind, um, and uh, and and see what you think. So my first comment really was my first tip is I guess you've got to be real. You know, one of the things that I've noticed, and I don't know if you guys have, is is particularly in marketing and comms, you know, everybody's still got their automated comms on and it's like, and, and radio and TV spots and stuff. And they're completely irrelevant. Like they're completely irrelevant. Someone's trying to sell a luxury handbag when I'm trying to get toilet roll for my kids. Like what is going on? Mm -hmm. So the first suggestion I'd, I'd make is be real, can all your automated rubbish, right? Can it? And start again, rethink it, be real with your, with, with, with your customers, with your people, be real, you know? They're struggling the same way. Don't give them some namsy pamsy um, kind of, you know, let's uh, let's all band together kind of thing without anything real in place. And with your partners, be real. Like you might not be able to pay everybody, so you need to be open uh, and transparent and real with them so that they can plan as well. So that's my first point, really. I'm going to keep it quite light, so forgive me, okay. but hopefully there's some the odd bit of uh, information you'll find helpful. First point: be be real. We're operating at the bo bottom. Of Maslow's pyramid and and remember that secondly I was gonna say as a business leader as a brand leader you really need to take stock of your resources like where are you so it to be responsible at this time is you know is so crucial right because you need to almost look at how much money have you got in the bank right this is this is it we're in survival mode um, who, what are your overheads? Who do you need to, you know, pay basically? And you need to start making some tough calls. I'm sure we all are. Like, do we need to subscribe to that thing? Do we really, you know, can we talk to our landlords about the rent that we've got in our warehouse that we're not operating in right now? You know, we need to really take stock of, of where we are. And I've called it kind of jettisoning the cargo, right? So anything you don't need, you've got to can it right now. We've got to be in lockdown. And that is the mentality, which is hard because 
two weeks ago we were like rah rah you know off we go and now we've got to adapt so quickly so yeah just a few thoughts on on that hold what you can communicate with who you can communicate with takes you know i was um, it's great the government has just issued in this country um the the sort of the fallbacks that, that, that they've just issued in terms of the the grants and stuff i'm i deal with teams all over the world so i was talking to someone in new york today i talked with teams in dubai and I'm not kidding, like they have got none of that stuff, right? So they are literally folding left, right and center. And so one of the things that um, I'm having to work on with teams is strategies like how much money have you got in the bank? If you divided that equally between all of your employees, how much is that? And how long could that be eked, eked out for, right? Could you say to everyone, look, you're only going to get $300 a month for the next three months, but that will guarantee you three months and get you that, that breathing space. And some of these companies are, are having to do that. Some companies are having to go to people and say, look, we cannot pay you, but you're not gonna get a job anywhere else. So either we pull together and we try and figure this out um, or um, you know, we, we disband and that's, that, that's life. So these are the real tough decisions that I know businesses are handling. Um, and I think it's really important that where possible you buy yourself some time by taking stock of where you are and knowing exactly how long you can survive. So my third point is have a plan, right? All leaders got to have a plan. And sometimes we might not know what that plan is because um, in other words, like we might not know what things are going to look like in three weeks time, right? That's true. But what we can start doing is putting some structure in place for our teams uh, or even ourselves if we work for ourselves and having something to just keep us sane, to keep us on track. So whereas before businesses might have a three year, nine year, sorry, um, yeah, three year, six year, nine year plan, three, six, nine plan or something like that, we've got to really minimize that. So we might be looking at what is our goal this week, right? What is our goal for our company this week? Is it just getting everyone set up digitally? Is it, is it um, you know, kind of making sure everyone's got the right equipment so that we can operate online? Is it putting safety first for our customers and, and making sure that we've got distancing in place. What is the goal this week? Just keep it simple. One goal. What is the goal then for the month? You know, is it just seeing this month out or is it actually, um, you know, kind of uh, broadening our, our, well, limiting our sort of ob objectives? Is it just to make sure everybody's okay? And we've, we've just kind of contacted all, all our suppliers. We've contacted as many customers as we can. Maybe that's our, our goal for this month. Um, and then what does three months look like? You know, what success look like in three months for our business? Um, survival, fine. What about um, starting to think about having some sort of a plan together to come out of the crisis kicking? I liked what um, I think it was Jess was saying earlier, like she's already thinking about the party that we're all going to have. Mm -hmm. I've just noticed my, that the sun's going down, right? And so, <laughs> so I'm slowly sort of going back. I'm just going to hit my light on and I'll be back in one second. <laughs> There we go. Oh, oh, that's better. I can see there you now. See me now. Sorry. There we go. Yeah. Um, so, so that's that's kind of have a plan. Um, and I think um, it kind of goes on to two my two other points that I'd like to make. I look like really scary now because my like I've got spotlights <laughs> above me, so I'll yeah. do that a little bit. <laughs> my further two points are add value, right? So I know that sounds obvious, um, but I always think that the, the two big brand questions are. Why do you exist beyond making money? And who do you exist to serve? They're the two killer brand strategy questions. Mm -hmm. So when you understand who you exist to serve, you now suddenly have a, a model of, of operating. In other words, um, instead of just talking product, like Victoria said, like you've invented a product and you're pushing it on people. No one cares about that. The, you've got to flip that. Who are the people and what do they need is the difference. Um, so the key there is to basically think about your audience. Like, who are they? Maybe take your top hundred customers, right? Make sure you, you know, talk to them, listen to what they're saying to you, cut your, you know, your comms that are just the standard old stuff and think about how, how you could actually add value to those people. Maybe you've got some stock in your warehouse. Maybe you can create a digital seminar. Maybe you can, um, you can send them something that will add value. I, I'm absolutely sick of getting the same old, comms from people you know like the ceo is saying it's really tough and this is what i we're doing about the situation 
-hmm. No one cares what you're doing, right? I've got to look after my family, right? Mm -hmm. Give me something that will be useful to me, you know, at all. Uh, um, um, maybe, you know, I've heard of some companies um, sending out like stuff, leftover goods from their warehouse just to, to, to people to help them. We've had examples like BrewDog who have suddenly switched on their um, manufacturing to instead of brew beer to to brew hand sanitizer. You know, um, we've heard of Dyson yesterday. They've just you know they've been prototyping ventilators. Now, not all of us are in that situation where we can do that. You know, if we're in a hotel industry or the gym industry, very hard. But even then, like I was thinking, like gyms, right? Say you own a gym. I don't know if anyone here does, but if you do, think about the fact that. Um, you know, your audience now can't come to you. So how can you get to them digitally, right? Could you get your personal trainers to do 15 minute classes like in the morning and afternoon from now on in? Could you innovate things like that? Um, maybe. So there's ways as, as, as almost like you were saying, Fiona, of taking the offline experience, minimizing it, making it more digestible for online stuff and, and doing what you can. We're doing it right now, right? A networking event online. My final point, and then I'll shut up. Oh, sorry, Victoria, did you want to say something? going to add in on that Matt if you don't mind no go for it that what you were saying about sort of situational is really interesting um if you look at Joe Wicks right now I think he's made such an amazing example yeah. because he's recognized that parents are going to be going fucking crazy thinking how am I going to homeschool my kids <laughs> for the next three months and he's put this out there with this exercise in the morning you know and I'm just like looking around the room here and I'm going Eva could do cookery Mm. nutritional cookery for kids now yes the return might not be there right now straight away but that's a give because you're right it's, it's not it, it's looking at the situation right now god mm. if someone can help parents free up time right now <laughs> Christ, <laughs> you're going to be like a hero when this is when this is over so I, I completely what you're but, saying yeah but that's the point isn't it the point yeah. is know who know your audience right yeah. and, and then look at their unmet needs or yeah. and and figure out a way where your brand can add that value that that, yeah. that everybody needs mm -hmm. um so I'd, i'll just uh, i'll just sort of finish up if, if that's okay or just actually one small point on that victoria that i think you touched on this it's a great time to innovate and prototype and try things because everybody's like forgiving right so that's what i was saying to yeah. fiona before this right i said to, we were like if we screw up tonight right people will be like hey well they're trying right. so yeah. Yeah. okay everybody yeah. loves a try God loves yeah them. absolutely so it's a great yeah. time to uh, to innovate and so you know taking the example of the gyms or gyms for kids or whatever it might be um you know see how that goes. You might start getting thousands and thousands of subscribers across the world, and then you can yeah. suddenly add it on as a very small fee uh, a, a, and a different pricing model and your brand continues, but in a completely different way. So when you go back online and, yeah. and we, we, we off, back offline, sorry, and we start going back out into the world, you might still keep that going. You might still have a little follower group that perhaps you never thought of. But the final, the final thing that I was going to say um, was to, to give hope to people, right? I think that is crucial as a brand leader. Um, so, um, and I know Mark's going to talk about this s sort of in a minute, but um, because we touch base, but my, my kind of thing on this is you need to um, almost have two, my suggestion is for most businesses is to have two strategies. One is a business continuity strategy, which is how do we service our audience as best we can on an ongoing basis? And the second really is a pivot strategy, is an innovation strategy, right? And that is all about how do you um, create something for the new world we're going to go back out into? Because things are not going to be the same. When we go back out there and the government says, let's, let's go, you know, people are going to need to feel secure. They're going to need to feel safe. You know, I know a lot of people here in the hospitality industry, you know, that is going to be very different. So when that happens, you know, what are the innovations that your business, your brand is going to actually make? Um, and so for that, I will, um, I'll leave some detail to Mark, so hopefully he can follow up. But all I would say is, is it's very hard to put somebody in charge of both the continuity and the innovation strategy. You almost need to segment them. So I, for bigger businesses, I'm suggesting, look, put, put one person on it, put three people on it, put five people on it, put a little SWAT team together and commission them with the mission of, of finding that big idea. And there's loads of things you can do from design sprints through to all sorts of things. And, and uh, I won't go on about that. But that team will give you your company hope. You may not know what they're gonna come out with, 
And that really at this stage, it doesn't matter. You need to have that plan and you need to go back into your company, present and say, look, this is what we're doing. We've got business continuity. This is how this is going to work. But running alongside that, guys, we're thinking about the future. We're going to come out of this fighting. We're going to be like the phoenix arising from the ashes. So that's it. I would also finally end up with the fact that I'm also happy to, to give any free advice to anyone who's struggling um, at the moment. So reach out. I'd love to Thank help. Thank you, Matt. Yeah, that's fantastic. Thanks ever so much, Matt, for the for your insight. It's really interesting. And I think, you know, every point that you made on there is interesting. But, um, you know, people are picking up on what you said before. We've got Diane who made a comment about people will remember companies who show they care. And I think that's a really valid point that you've made there is that, again, it goes back to the relationship building of keeping yourself relevant keeping your profile raised, making sure that people don't forget you, don't giving up, don't give up, even though, you know, we're going through a really tough time right now, don't hide away. Now is the time to actually make, get out there more so than ever before, because um, it's quite easily easy to, while we're in isolation and behind closed doors, and people are treating it, not everybody, but some people I'm seeing are treating this like a bank holiday. You know, there it's almost like they're, treating it like they're on holiday and I'm, I'm sensing that people aren't taking it as seriously as they perhaps should be and they're not getting a strategy in place and they're not planning ahead um, and those are the people that unfortunately may get lost when things do get back to normal as you've quite rightly said because um, you've got to stay relevant you know it's quite easy to get lost in the hustle and bustle of everything that's going on and if you're not kind of keeping relevant and keeping memorable and staying out there, your competitors will be and the people that are doing the same thing as you might well be. I think one interesting question that we should all ask ourselves is how do we want to be remembered when mm. we go back to normal, right? Because we will get back to normal. We will get through it. Yeah, but yeah. how will we be remembered? We'll be remembered as the company that like slashed everything and was really rude to people and just like, mm. you know, was all about us or the company like someone's put here. I think Diane's mentioned on the chat you know, small local businesses that are helping neighborhoods will be remembered long after this has passed. And I think that's a really, really valid, valid point. Absolutely. And she's also mentioned about the fact that Weatherspoons are in her bad books at the moment as well. And, and mine too, Diane, you know, and we, yeah. we think about some brands that are out there that we're hearing getting bad press, Sports Direct, that aren't treating their staff uh, maybe as well as they could do, that are making early redundancies, that are um staying open when they shouldn't be open there are things you know they're not respecting the law they're not respecting everybody else when everybody else is closing and those people that are closing that can't afford to close are doing the right thing and those people that are staying open when they shouldn't be um you know are, are, are really doing the wrong thing and they're just looking after themselves and so yeah well they those are the people that are going to be remembered for the wrong reasons unfortunately i agree Right, so thanks for that then, Matt. We'll move on, because it's already 10 to 7. Can you believe it? Time flies when you're having fun. Um, so we're going to move on to Paul now, Paul Stafford from Cloudworks, um, who is our next, um, next speaker. So I am going to just do a little intro. Sorry, you can tell that I'm new at this, but, you know, we'll get there. So Paul then is, um, as I said before, is an IT specialist, Cloudworks based in Nottingham. They're a gold Microsoft partner that specializes in cloud services, security and support. Um, and uh, Paul's gonna talk to us tonight about remote working, tools and services that are available for that, uh, collaborating with employees remotely and how best that you can go about that, how to transition from office-based systems to cloud technologies, and also security for remote working if we've got a bit of time. Uh, and we're also going to uh, see if we can screen share as well to Paul so he can do a little short demonstration for us. So we'll, we'll see how we go on that one. But yeah, we... <laughs> well, I thought I'd, I'd keep it safe and just have put a few slides on my screen. It's, I think it'll be the best oh, way. And then oh, okay, you can you don't have to get that. Either, that's either, that's so uh, <laughs> the rest of both worlds. Uh, well, yes, hello, hello and welcome. Let's have a go. Right. Okay. So PowerPoint. There we go. I'm going to share that. See if I can do it. So I take it you're busy at the moment, Paul, with what you're doing in your industry right now. It is um, both, yeah, on a business perspective and domestically as well, because inadvertently I've become IT support for for my kids um, because now they're at home 
all the schools are saying right we need to collaborate online so yeah. it's quite it's quite funny because they're all um you know they're all using teams and office 365 and yeah and they're, they're starting to know more than me which is a bit scary really <laughs> and um you know, they're all talking to all their mates and in, in, in the classroom and they've got they've got them all on the screen and it, it's quite fantastic to see it and yeah. to kind of see what technology they're using now because i think in you know 10 years time when they're at university or you know going to work i mean mm. these tools that we're using now when we're getting to grips with will be second nature for them so Absolutely, it's, yeah. it's amazing really so um right it's saying I'm, I'm, hang on. let's see if i can do this let's try again if you, want to, you can press share at the bottom of your screen if you want to share anything right and you now see my screen yeah we can see it yeah Brilliant. okay so yeah as fiona said um we've been going cloudworks been going about five years now um and we work with a lot of companies around nottingham and nationally as well so anyone from sort of one-man bands right up to bigger clients of 300 plus so we do all sorts really and across all sectors as well um, which makes it really interesting at the minute because we've got a lot of different clients coming to us with a lot of different ways they want to work remotely um, mm -hmm. and often what we do is we kind of go back to them and we we say well how you know when it comes to remote working what do you mean and that's probably a good place to start here is you know what is remote working because it's it's trending on twitter everyone's using mm -hmm. it that term at the minute and it means a lot of different things to a lot of different people um my idea would be that picture on the screen right now which should be sitting in a lilo <laughs> with a button. maybe a little bit cheaper though because uh, I think if I drop my MacBook in the water, <laughs> I'd be uh, losing a lot of money. So <laughs> I'll avoid that. Um, but essentially, I mean, it's a working style that allows us to work outside of a traditional office environment. Mm -hmm. um, and depending on your business, there's many different methods and requirements to do that. Um, and it can mean that you know you either you're fully remote. Um, which we have a lot of clients where they have clusters of remote workers and they never come into the office, but they have an office environment as well. So their requirements are different to staff who are predominantly based in the office, but may sort of work part-time at home. So mm -hmm. again, there's different tools to enable that. Um, and these days, you know, with the cloud as well, it really helps with that. Um, but the great thing is you can use multiple devices these days, you know, it isn't just about using stuck on a desktop PC, um, you know, you can use your Mac, you can use a, an iPhone to have a video conference or a tablet and you can be sitting anywhere like we're all doing now. So it's, it's great that the cloud has kind of enabled that mm. and it is one common component of remotely working these days um, so you know what are the tools of the trade um, as I said you know multiple devices um, mm -hmm. multiple operating systems as well so a lot of the cloud systems now will work on Windows they work on Mac they work on iOS and they work on Android so it's great and particularly when it comes to office applications like office 365 you know they work across platform now as well you don't need to have a windows computer so in a sense it makes it a lot more accessible um i mean kind of the real basics for working remotely are or used to be i suppose email and a phone yeah. uh, which people still do um and it works very effectively because a lot of people will just communicate on email and they'll pick up a phone and give someone a call um, but you know these days a lot of business data is getting moved around um, it needs to be accessible so what we see or a lot of clients have used in the past is remote desktops so when they go home they've used a remote desktop to access their computer in the office um, it has been an effective way of working but these days it's not necessarily that secure so uh, what a lot of customers are doing is moving their data into the cloud so it becomes 
more secure, more accessible. Um, and then on, on from that, um, there's a lot of communication apps around now. So, you know, instant messaging, um, there's Yammer, there's WhatsApp. I mean, these also do video conferencing. Uh, you can share data with them as well. Yeah. But again, they are, this is one of the concerns for a business, it's their third party applications. So when it comes to a compliance po point of view, it, you know, you have to consider, well, is it safe that my business data is going across those networks? Um, mm. You know, they are prone to uh, hack attacks and particularly WhatsApp has had one in the past. Um, so you have to sort of bear that in mind and it's something, you know, we can, we can help you with that and decide, well, what is the best solution depending on how secure your data needs to be? Yeah. Um, and then when it comes back to the phones, also these days, um, you can have something called a cloud uh, PABX, which is a, uh, it's like a, a telephone system, but it's cloud based. So normally in an office environment, you have lots of desk phones and they're linked up via cable down to a box in the comms room, which does all the communications and it handles all the phone lines. But these days we see a lot of transition to cloud systems. So essentially what that means is you're, you can still have a desk phone, uh, but it's connected directly to the network and the actual telephone system is in the cloud. So you could actually take that desk phone home with you, plug it in and it will work just like it's in the office. You'll have your same phone number and it'll, it'll be like you're working anywhere. Um, and also Clever. a lot of them now have um, applications that run on your mobile as well so you can actually have your extension on your mobile so it kind of sits as another layer so if someone calls you, you in the office and you're down halfway down the road you can pick up that call so it's great um, and then video conferencing tools like we're all using at the moment Zoom which is a fantastic tool um, Teams as well there's Webex uh, WhatsApp and FaceTime so there's all these different platforms and again you know it kind of comes back to well requirements of your business and the security of your data you know I think certainly bigger companies will want to look at something that's integrated so uh, Teams is a good example of that that it's actually part of a customer's tenant so Office 365 and Teams work alongside each other. So in terms of collaborating on, say, your Word documents, you can pull them into Teams, you can create little breakout groups or little project groups, and you can share that data. And that data sits within the company environment. It isn't taken out of um, the environment onto another platform. So therefore, you still have control of the data, which is a really important thing. Um, so just moving on, what does, you know, what does kind of collaboration look like in the cloud? I mean, OneDrive, which probably a lot of you heard of, um, it's something we get a lot of calls about. Um, and, you know, there's really good ways of sharing data. And I think a lot of times we find that people are still using email to share documents. And we, we sort of say to them, well, just be aware of the fact that when you attach a document to an email and you send it out that you you'll then lose control of it effectively mm -hmm. if you're doing it internally fine but if you're not if you're sending it to an external client then that's where if it is confidential you've got to be wary of the fact that you've lost control of it so what we try and get people to do now is is share data and do it from their cloud storage whether it's OneDrive or SharePoint um, but when it comes to that cloud storage, you can have that on your device, whether it's a, a Mac or Windows or iPhone as well. You can access your OneDrive using the OneDrive app. Um, so you can have your data everywhere and it's all synchronized as well. So if you work on it in the desk, on your desktop, if you then go to your phone, you've got the latest copy there. So it all keeps it in real time. So, you know, when you are sharing data, um, you, you, you have got control over it. So the company might set up rules or you can set up rules that who accesses that data and how do they access it? Can they read it or can they edit it as well? 
Um, so you can control that with with something like SharePoint or Google Google Documents does it as well, which is another great tool. Um, and then even things like compliance, and we get a lot of this for accountants. So after a certain period of time, they have to archive uh, a lot of their data. So you, when you actually put, put that into the cloud, you can set com compliance rules on it. So you have a, like a cutoff time. And then what you do when it reaches that cutoff time. So you either permanently delete it or you archive it or, or um, you know, whatever you want to do with it, really. So there's a lot of, a lot of power to it. And then when, also when you're collaborating in the, ta in the cloud, um, I mean, this uh, screenshot here is Microsoft Teams. Um, so you can see there's little meeting groups you can have, you can make calls with it. Um, so you can actually make external calls if you have um, a Microsoft calling plan. So a bit like you would an external call through a, a normal phone system. Um, and then, you know, one great thing is that you can, um, you can create little project groups so you can start to share and it, it really helps in terms of collaboration, I think. And I think rather than sort of pinging stuff backwards and forwards on email, you know, people can feel more included and not so isolated if you're working together um, and you get that kind of presence as well. So, and also within those groups, you can suddenly, you can jump into a video call and just include everyone at one point. Um, who's and can I just say on that, group. sorry Paul, just to say on the team side of things as well is that we looked at this earlier in the week, didn't we? And it's not just for sort of meeting collaborations, is it, in-house or externally, but you can also use it for live events like we are now. Mm, yeah, and I will say, yeah, we did have some trouble with that. <laughs> <laughs> but again, issues, you know, yeah. it's a new thing that, I mean, yeah. um, you know, like all Amazon and um, Google, they're constantly evolving. Um, and it's one thing, you know, we, we, you know, we're trying to keep up with all the time, you know, every day they're bringing that. And this is one of the beauty of being in the cloud and using cloud based products is that mm -hmm. they're evolving all the time. And I think certainly recently we've seen a lot of new things accelerated and new features come into teams mm -hmm. and SharePoint and OneDrive a lot quicker than they would normally so it's great to kind of see that and be able to kind of talk with clients and say oh did you know about this new feature i think it will really help you out so um can, yeah uh, can i just interject as well for a moment we use teams a lot and we've just had enabled team meetings and it's really good it's yeah. like webex but so much better so much clearer oh, that's good and it links directly into your outlook calendar so if you enable meetings, I don't know how it happened because we're a big company and, and it just appeared. Um, a button for calendars appeared. And with that, it meant we could set up meetings, much like we do WebEx, mm -hmm. but they're Teams meetings. And That's you've got none of your access codes, none of your user ID, no dialing in. It's directly off a headset. It's so good. Mm. And you, you're from a big company, aren't you, Diane? Yeah. yeah. So how a big corporate firm, lots of different sites, I imagine. Yes. So you're it, able it, to connect through yeah, that we, through all the different sites. Yeah, we were really struggling with uh, WebEx. Uh, I think Cisco's been having some quite bad uh, bandwidth problems. Um, and this was a, an IT solution, was to go with uh, Teams meetings. And it has just been revolutionary. Right. Great. So, yeah. No, that's great. Thank you for sharing that, Diane. Thank you. No worries. Yeah. So, um, I'll just go on to a few little tips because I think these are quite useful. Um, I mean, you know, probably the first one, and it's something I've kind of avoided a lot. I didn't like it was embracing video calling. I didn't like having a video mm. on, and I always sort of um, there's a great clip on YouTube. There's a picture of it there with a. Uh, Professor Robert Kelly when he was getting interviewed oh. by the BBC and his kind of children sort of come yeah. in from the, from the back and then <laughs> causing carnage in the, in the background but you know we've all been kind of forced into this situation mm. right now and mm. it's you know it's a case of adapting to it I mean um you know I'm sitting on my balcony and it's freezing cold but I'm just yeah I'm just <laughs> <laughs> trying to get some peace and quiet and it you know yeah we we all kind of work around it so yeah. but i think yeah. it also it really does help 
and particularly when I'm talking to the rest of the team is that we can all feel included and it's not we don't feel isolated as well and it's yeah. good to see people um, on a daily basis especially at the minute when we're you know we're having to isolate so um, Absolutely. You know, the next point really was about collaboration tools and I think um, like Dan said teams you know it really helps with that um, mm -hmm. to include people so that you know you can kind of get people's opinion because I, I do think email gets a little bit cold you know you can kind of think about your reply too much whereas mm -hmm. you know when you're using the collaboration tool um, like this you know it's more instant and you can kind of you know well, things more... can get misconstrued as well can't they on email and I think you know sometimes like you say cold but you can read something differently to what some other, another person would read it as on an email whereas you know when you're talking through video or um, live chat it's very much kind of um, an instant thing like you said and there can be no kind of uh, mistakes there then if you're you're just talking to each other like you would in, in, a, in a normal conversation face to face yeah and one of the good things as well i think to do and it's something you know we're trying to do at the minute because i think now that we're all isolated a bit is to try and sort of sit down and set up tasks and and timelines and goals as well so what what can we work on at the minute and um you know there's a lot of kind of integrations into like Teams and Zoom, where you you can actually say like uh, link in a project plan. Um, so we're starting to pull in project plans, and we have them in our kind of team huddles. So we'll, we'll create particular areas for certain projects, and then we'll kind of you know it just crystallizes it a lot more, and it really mm. helps to kind of keep track of what's going on because otherwise it's very it's difficult when you just got a laptop at home and trying to you know keep an eye on what's going on really um yeah. yeah so the other thing really i guess try and run through these a bit quicker is sort of internet connection that's really you know we we struggle with it a little bit sometimes here but i often find that if, if my broadband's getting battered i'll go outside and i'll hotspot off my phone and that that can work very well and particularly i mean this doesn't apply at the moment but if you are you know you're working on um you know need to kind of go out to a, a cafe in the in the future try not to use a hotspot there use mm. your own because if you are you know you've got business data and it's confidential then try not to do it over um, a hotspot because it may be that they don't have client isolation so someone could potentially see what's happening on your device and look at that data um, and then a little thing in terms of bandwidth turn off a lot of other applications you might have running so if you've got your web browsers open and your email um, I mean it's good to turn off email when you're in a video call anyway because uh, I've seen it before where everyone's getting email notifications and you're oh, hearing yeah. things going every five seconds so turn it all off <laughs> um, and then you might you won't get any messages popping up on your screen as well and then also, as I mentioned before, Absolutely. sharing business data using using the cloud storage and not on email. Um, and then just quickly on security. Um, I mean, obviously, when we're at home, we're using either a laptop, we might be using a desktop, a lot of portable devices. It's really important to make sure your password is secure and you're using a complex password. I know it's, it's really easy to use something that you, is memorable, but, you know, you, when you're in the cloud, your identity is your security. So if someone, if someone got around that and they got access to your, say your username and they could easily crack your password, then they're in, they have access to all your data. So it's really, really important. Um, make sure you've got secure password and that you're using MFA, which is multi-factor authentication. It's something a lot of, um, you know a lot of things like office 365 has it google has it now so when you log into something um you have a kind of second layer so it'll either send you an sms message or you can have an app on your phone that will give you a code or you press a button and it will prove that login so it's another really good layer of um protection um and then also make sure if you can that you're using something like bitlocker which is available on windows computers and there's equivalent on mac so that you're encrypting the data on your computer 
um, because if that device gets stolen, someone can get around the password and they can access all your data. So um, that's really, really important to do as well. Just on the, the comments on that, Paul, just to read out, Steve um, from uh, our photographer, Steve, has said that he uses registration numbers from cars that he's owned in the past for passwords. Just a, it's quite a good tip. Um, I know yeah. that um, people people often on in this sort of health and well-being world tend to, for passwords, use positive affirmations. Um, because obviously we on a daily basis use passwords for different things all over the place and it's quite nice to use a positive affirmation as a password because then you're actually typing it in and reading it back to yourself and uh, so it could be almost like a message that you're saying to yourself like you're amazing could be your password you're amazing yeah. and then you're typing it in and you're you know it's like it's great but mm -hmm. it's a positive thing so all of these things are um just like little tips but um but then there's only a small thing but actually it, it can have quite a big effect can't it yeah and there are password managers out there as well you know free utilities that you know if you can put all your passwords into it and it keeps them all encrypted so if you do forget them right you can go in there and pull the passwords out um and then mike that says that he uses a program called dash lane for mm. passwords yeah would you yeah. recommend that Mac Pass as well, that's a good okay. one you know, if you're on a Mac. Um, okay. Key Pass and another one on Windows. So yeah, there's quite a few around which are really good. So yeah, great. Good to use. Um, yeah, so just finally really, don't, don't ignore or delay any updates on your computer as well, because particularly at the moment, I think as the transition to home working has come very quickly, you know, mm -hmm. there are a lot of people with spare time on their hands doing things they shouldn't be doing on the cyber world and in the dark web. So they will be out there trying to hack systems, uh, be mm -hmm. trying to hack business systems. So um, Microsoft and um, Apple will be releasing updates all the time to mm -hmm. your security and also the Windows updates. So try not to delay them or delay a restart if it needs a restart. Uh, and, and then finally, yeah, keep an eye out for phishing emails because that sometimes they are quite difficult to spot. Um, I, I had one, I think yesterday, which was an SMS, which uh, was that one. Um, and I nearly clicked on it. <laughs> was this a text <laughs> message? The, uh, yeah, the UK government yeah. said, oh, you're... Yeah, I've seen this, I've seen this. Mm. I think Lisa, Lisa put a shout out actually on her Facebook, because I think she received this as well um, this week. And yeah, and that's actually a scam then, is it? Yeah, yeah, I mean, it, it's... The best thing to do is look up the actual URL it takes you to because yeah. if it's not an official government site, um, you know, it says uk.covidrelief.com. So it's something someone's made up and it will take you to a site that looks like the government site. Yeah. Um, but it isn't. So, yeah, always check the URLs. Um, I mean, again, a lot of the security tools out there, McAfee, Norton, they do check safe links. Um, Office 365 does it if you have the right package as well. So um, it will scan the link for you and tell you whether or not it's safe. Um, and if it's not sure, it will give you a tip anyway to say, you know, have a look at it and just make mm. sure. Yeah, um, and I so, think about it's reading it properly as well because we just skim things, don't we? But Steve's made a valid point on that previous slide of the um, the uh, NHS government, sorry, the government NHS text that actually there's a spelling mistake and a quite an obvious spelling mistake on there that I wouldn't have noticed if Steve mm. didn't notice. So it, it's things like that, isn't it? But it's it's easily done. It's easily now the scammers are getting so good, aren't they? That it's quite difficult to differentiate them between yeah. the real thing. Yeah. So, I mean, finally, I mean, the other topic, if we've got time, is just about migrating to the cloud. Um, I mean, I won't go into too much detail, really. I mean, if any of you guys, you know, either you're in the cloud or you're kind of halfway there or you're kind of thinking about it but not really sure, then by all means, give me, give me a shout and we can talk about your requirements because everyone's different and mm. everyone has different requirements and so are you know, available a bit for people? Daunting. sorry mm. sorry because there's a bit of a time delay on this i'll put my hand up before i speak next mm. time paul sorry um i was just going to say so are you around if people are that want a bit more information on sort of certain things that are specific to them after today um yeah, are you around on a zoom call in yeah if you're kind of looking at 
you know, perhaps what package to use and how it will integrate with what you do on a day to day basis. I mean, mm. you know, one of the slides I've got here, which we show to customers is this one. And there's so many different Microsoft products out there now. You know, everyone thinks, oh, it's just Word, Excel, PowerPoint. But, you know, it does so much more. But, you know, there's so many different packages and it's you know when you go to the website I mean even we get a bit confused sometimes because they change it all the time so you kind of look at the packages and go well which one do I need you know you don't necessarily know so mm -hmm. you know we can certainly help with that you know if yeah. you're not sure whether to move your right. email or you want to keep your email where it is you want to move your data yeah. you might need your SharePoint there's all these different applications and so yeah right. I'll just kind of finish by saying yeah Give, give us a call if you need any help. And That's great. Thanks ever so much, Paul. Thank you. I mean, I know there's a lot to IT, so you've covered quite a, a lot in a, a short space of time there. So obviously, if anybody else wants, if anybody wants to speak to Paul, then um, what we'll do is after this, we are recording this. So if that's OK with everybody, and we forgot we meant to say that at the beginning, actually, that we will send this out afterwards um, so that you can re-watch anything that you might have missed. If there was anything that any particular speaker that resonated with you and you want to re-watch them to make some notes, then that will be sent out to you anyway. And then obviously their contact details as well, if they're happy to share those, if you want to get in touch with them. But thanks ever so much then, Paul. Thank you. No right, we had better move on now. Um, we will get out of, that's it. So we've, we've shut down the, uh, the old uh, screen share now. Thank you. Uh, just on that as well, Mark actually made a, a valid point of quite a funny, shared a funny story about Corona beer. Funnily enough, it has to be Corona as well once issued stock with the address on as Burton Upton Trent rather than upon Trent. And then Trading Standards seized it, thinking that it was dodgy. It turned out that it was actually just a typo. <laughs> it was genuine. So there we go. <laughs> so they're not always scams. They could just be somebody that hasn't proofread something properly. So, uh, right, so let's let's move on then now. So our next speaker, we're going to move on to um, Mark from the Brand Strategy, who's going to take us through uh, key actions for leaders to consider while managing businesses through stressful times. So uh, we're going to go back to sort of branding for a little bit now. Um, so uh, over, over to you, Mark. Hi, everybody. Um, and thank you for that, Paul, uh, that last piece. Uh, having the uh, photo of the BBC News uh, item where the kid ran in brought back uh, some bad memories from when I was once doing a piece to BBC News and I was uh, pretending to be somewhere where I wasn't. I was actually at the indoors house and the uh, camera was balanced very delicately on a, uh, on a couple of chairs that were stacked up and if it fell it would have been a very embarrassing piece that people would have a rather messy room I was sat in. But, so, fortunately that didn't happen. So hello everybody, I'm Mark from The Brand Strategy uh, where we focus on delivering long-term sustainable business, um, helping add value for customers and brand. I'm also, as I think mentioned earlier, a lecturer um, in marketing and leadership at Nottingham Business School as well. Um, so a few of us have got links back to NTU, which is nice. Um, so I think if we look at this um, situation in, it, it's really like nothing ever before, is it? Um, but what we can do is start to look at comparables to try and gain insight for what might happen. So as somebody said, just we can't predict the future. Uh, none of us are Mystic Meg. Um, but what we can do is look at the past um, and try and learn lessons from the past. And one of the things that is probably most relevant is the recession around 2008. If you compare the effect on the stock market, um, you can almost map the two on top of each other. It's, it's very similar, um, albeit obviously consumers are behaving in very different ways at the moment in this unprecedented crisis. So at the time of the recession in 2008, a lot of analysis was done on the best way for businesses to behave. And ultimately, which ones then came out on top uh, were then reflected on. The summary of all that research was that almost counterintuitively, now is actually not the best time to cut back. Um, that the strongest businesses were actually those um, that invested in brand strategy. They protected their marketing budgets um, and started to research new customer behaviours. Because don't be fooled that when all this is over, that will all return to normal. 
uh, because normal won't exist anymore. It will be a new normal. Consumers will be conditioned to new behaviours. Um, so very simplistically, if we think, you know, how many people have suddenly started using online food services um, that wouldn't have before? So getting their food delivered. Um, how many people have realised that actually cooking at home isn't that hard? Um, and you can create some decent food and some decent meals without having to go out to a restaurant. Uh, so that will start to have an impact on consumer behaviour. How many people are using this type of technology? So what impact will that have on train companies? and so on and so forth. So it's given people a real opportunity to start to look at things differently. So now is really a time to, to research customers and think about the new behaviours and wants that they will be demonstrating. And with that, to then look at you as a business and reconsider your product or service portfolio. Um, and most importantly, to then emphasise what your core values are as a business. So let's recognise that actually pre this crisis, fairly recent research actually showed that 81% of brands could disappear and no one would care. So consumers are really not going to be very forgiving of the brands that get it wrong during these times. You know, we, we see so much of them already. And part of that reason that we were getting to that point pre crisis is the track and react culture, as I call it, where much of marketing has found itself in where a lot of people in marketing focus on immediate responses to messaging. Um, you know, we can track everything that happens on social media or websites and see what then happens to it. So the industry is obsessed uh, with change, 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 um, and not necessarily consistent brand building. And as we know, an obsession could be, you know, could be good, but it's not necessarily a great thing. So yet here we face a scenario for many businesses where there isn't that immediate reaction as customers can't go out for many things and just buy the products or services. They don't have that instant click to buy them like they used to. And, and this is leaving a lot of marketing executives quite confused of what to do next. And arguably this could be the reason why ad revenues are down on Facebook and Twitter when actually, as, as Victoria said earlier, you know, the, those platforms have got more eyeballs on them than ever before because people are all at home, they're looking at those platforms, but the brands just don't know what to say. And, and yes, there is an element of respect and, and backing off during these crisis times, but all of the brands that were focused on buy it now, click here, buy this, buy now, buy now, they're, they're struggling because they haven't got that ability to then fulfill that through. So what an opportunity now for, for brand building. So effective leadership is going to be really critical at this point and, and yourselves as leaders in your own businesses should be considering the impact your brand can have on the communities that you operate in. Um, as a parallel at Harvard Business School, they uh, came out recently and spoke about it and said to move on from this crisis mode, brands and business leaders need to start thinking outside of the building. Um, so what's happening in the outside world around you? Understand it and adapt. So understand, adapt. As examples, we, we've all seen good and bad examples of this practice already starting to kick into place. Um, you know, the, the Belfast branch of Iceland supermarkets that started opening for the first hour exclusively for those in need, mm -hmm. which obviously then spread across all of their chain and is being replicated across most of the market by other operators. Interestingly, I've seen a lot of people saying that they thought that was Sainsbury's that started that, but it was actually Iceland. Um, I think it's interesting to then think, well, how will that start to change consumer behaviours? Is that something that might continue, for example, or maybe continue, but with a slightly different theme? So, you know, the retailers have proven they can do it. So maybe opening exclusively for those that need it going forwards. So while it's been trialled in many places, they might start to do things like opening for families with children with autism for an hour. Uh, once a week or, or things like that that maybe they hadn't been brave enough to try and this is giving them the opportunity like Matt said to innovate and obviously we've also seen the examples of worse behavior and I'm not going to dwell on those because we can all go to the Daily Mail and read um, about Weatherspoon and, and all the others that have, have maybe done not so great things. <laughs> Another in-depth study um, after the 2008 downturn categorized nine 
different types of business response in how the brands dealt with the situation. And don't worry, I'm not going to go through all that. Um, just the top one. So recognizing that of those nine different responses that businesses had, and this was looking back at the downturn, so they had the data, they had the information there. They found the optimum was those that cut costs by improving operational efficiencies and not the ones that were slashing employee numbers. And also a thing that stood out about these businesses was that they were the ones that were investing in research and development, in marketing, and also in their capacities. So things such as buying plant, machinery, bringing new people into the business. And that approach actually showed through ongoing positive stock market experience for much longer after the recession. It wasn't an immediate um, effect only. It continued on uh, for many years, uh, much better than the other eight categories uh, that they identified. And one of the things that stands out with a lot of these businesses is something called meaningful difference, which some of you will have, will have come across. Um, and understanding what their meaningful difference was in the community they operated in, very similar to what Matt was saying earlier. So it's key at this point to understand what can you as a business contribute to the communities you operate in um, that no other business can. And it's proven uh, with quite a bit of data that businesses that look at that and consider that as part of their long term focus are able to deliver, quote from the research, very, very large profit growth over the long term and much more so than those that are relying on short-term tactics. So if I come to summarise those four points, the four things that I boil it down to are as leaders in a crisis, the first thing that we must do is to address the short-term needs. So we're all doing that at the moment, aren't we? So address the short-term needs to ensure business survival. And that can be things like making sure people are kitted out with the, the cloud um, software that we've just seen there from Paul, uh, making sure that people are comfortable, that consumers know how to get hold of things, um, and so on and so forth. So that immediate term actions. The second point is to start to put money, or not necessarily, wrong way, start to put investment, which could be time investment, into consumer or customer research and market analysis understand what customers are wanting understand what the market is doing and try and get it done before competitors are and to try and define that potential future space for your brand in what is the new normal the third point is to invest in brand strategy to define what the optimum brand positioning is because if you've looked at who the customers are and what they want you've understood what's happening in the market and the market analysis, the next step is to make sure that your brand is relevant and that you're positioned well in that space. And then the fourth and final point um, in this summary is to keep a balanced approach. Um, so very difficult at this time to keep a balance between long and short term actions, but try to keep the two going. Um, and I, I think someone earlier, it might have been Matt, um, suggested bringing together a, a team specifically focused on future, on looking at innovation. And I think that's a great idea and a great way of doing it. Now, some businesses might not be big enough to do that. Other businesses might be being savvy and saying, well, look, we, we've got this time where we're not trading. Let's use it to look to the future. So the final comment from me is around timing. So I've spoken to a lot of business leaders over the last week um, who have kind of said to me, okay, all that is great, but actually we're still in crisis panic mode. We're still trying to make sure that all of the team can just log on to Microsoft Teams. We're still trying to get you know, email conversations with everybody. We're still trying to get things up and running. Uh, we're still trying to work out the logistics to make sure that the wheels don't fall off. Um, so to which I've said to them, well, actually, realistically, this situation is going to go on for, for weeks or more than likely months. And consumers and workers will, will start to adapt to this almost interim new normal. What we're doing now will, will almost become, you know, how we, we expect things. There's lots of theories of change that are that we're going into it. And we're kind of going through the, you know, the, the storming process at the moment. But what we'll get to is actually this will become normal for us. And we'll start to accept it and adapt. Um, because as humans, we're obviously very good at adapting to things. So start to get the strategy hats on as soon as possible. 
Um, if you have got the luxury of people that can do that specifically, great. If you've got the time available, um, try, and I, I find this difficult, so I understand it, but try and switch off BBC News um, and the constant barrage of updates um, and memes and try and think about the strategic future while you've got this luxury of time, if you have, if you're business and agency. Um, and definitely try and get there before your competitors do. If you want to know any more about anything uh, I've said, a bit more depth, or any of the links to the sources I've mentioned, all of the links to the sources I've mentioned are on the website, uh, which is thebrandstrategy.co.uk, um, and it's in the blog. So thebrandstrategy.co.uk forward slash blog, and all the links to any of the sources I've referred to there um, are all in there. I'd also, um, it came out today, um, after I, I decided kind of the, the detail of what I wanted to cover. Um, but Marketing Week, if any of you are subscribers of Marketing Week, have done a really good piece today um, on a similar topic about long term. So that's worth looking at as well. Okay. Thank you very much. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Mark. You raised so many, so many valid points there that I don't know where to start with it really. But um, <laughs> uh, you've also written an article recently, which you sent me, didn't you? So where can people find that article? Is that on your blog as well? It is, yeah. So that's at thebrandstrategy.co.uk yeah. forward slash blog. Yeah. Great. And we can probably post that on the members group of LinkedIn as well for people to read because that's your most recent one, isn't it? About covering it is, about yes. I feel like I need to do some more. It's one of those things that you, you kind of think um, you should do. And actually the, the reason that that came about was, was helping people. Yeah. Uh, so I was actually writing um, for a charity that I um, am a trustee of. I, I was actually writing some guidance for our chief executive on, on how to, to cope. And I mm. thought, well, I'll, I'll do my research and do it properly. And as I wrote it, I thought, do you know what? I should share this with, with anyone yeah. that wants it. So that's where that great. came. Thank you. No, that's really great. And I think it, I really sort of what resonates with me and what stands out um, with what you've said to me is the new normal. You know, we're not going to go back to normal. Nothing will be the same again after this. But we as humans, as you quite rightly said, are adaptable naturally. We have to. And so it's interesting that, to see what the new normal will be when we come out of this and how all of the things that we're learning about now and we're just um, gradually um, getting on board with as in the online stuff and the remote stuff and this, the new stuff that we've adapted our business towards it will go hand in hand because we'll be able to at some point probably go back to the way we were you know to some respect you know our SVIP will bring its events back but we'll also have the online stuff now as well so we'll be able to carry on with that and integrate that into the membership probably you know so I'm already thinking ahead as to when we do go back to bringing the events how we can integrate you know zoom and all the remote stuff that we will kind of be hopefully up on by that point and <laughs> and a bit more used to um you know at the moment we're using it because it's as you rightly said we're in panic mode and we're doing it because it's an alternative to you know and it's something that we're doing and it's the only real fallback that we can do however it will be an accompaniment to our events eventually as well i think and to our offering and as it will be with many other businesses um, so if anything, as a silver lining to what we're going through right now, I think, you know, it's um, interesting, isn't it, to see um, all the new, uh, we're educating ourselves right now, really, in business and all the new things that we are, have learned now that we'll be able to use going forward um, it, it will become our new normal. It will. And, and industries, like I say, like the, the travel industry, I think will will be hit in the new normal because... Mm -hmm. I think video conferencing has been around for a long time mm. and people just haven't embraced it and for mm. various reasons and made excuses why. Mm. And actually now many people have been forced to uh, mm. and accepted it and understand it and have, have had to take that learning curve. So how yeah. many trips will we not be doing now from Nottingham to London? Um, because <laughs> yeah. of the technology and that, you know, that will have a, an impact on the uh, travel industry. Yeah. And others, so. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, sure, Nikki, yeah. To say, um, Mark, that was brilliant. I would love to talk to you about travel industry because that's where my focus is. That's who I work with. I work with hoteliers. I work with travel brands. So I would love to talk with you more. Oh, excellent. And I, I'm um, previously Forest Holidays and just finished a big piece of work for Butlins. So, uh, yeah. Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Well, thanks again, Mark, for joining us and sharing your expertise tonight. It was really, really interesting. Thank you.
Right then, so we're going to move on now to, we're going to look at some, um, uh, our personal. So we've, we've covered business and now let's look at ourselves and how we can care for ourselves a little bit in these tough times. So we're going to talk to Mike Lawrence, who is a health and wellbeing consultant, and he's going to talk to us about looking after your mental health and wellbeing during this COVID-19 outbreak. So Mike, are you there? Yes, I'm here. You're Hello, right. welcome. <laughs> Before I start, I just want to thank all the, the speakers um, so far, everyone listening, it's been absolutely brilliant and everything. So I just want you to raise the glasses to everybody so far. I think it's been really good. Cheers, everyone. <laughs> um, also, um, I'm just going to go off script slightly. I just want everyone just to stand up, actually, just to stand up. <laughs> <laughs> it's lucky we put a bottom half on. <laughs> Are we standing up? Are we? Are we all doing it? Okay. <laughs> Rotate your shoulders. Um, wiggle your hands. Wiggle your arms. Your shoulders. Wiggle your body. Your your waist and everything. And then your knees. And then shake hand and just sit down again and just sit down and just relax. <laughs> just Thanks for that, Mike. Needed that. <laughs> <laughs> just, to get the, just to get the energy flowing. Because Absolutely. probably like with all of you as well, we're all working from home. We're sat in from, we've been, and in a sense, we've been sat at, uh, normally we sat at our desk, we sat at work. Um, um, a lot of people are sat at home all of the times and now they're sat in front of the computer, sat in front of a laptop. Mm. So one of the key things, one important things is to, is to get up and move um, and to get up and move and walk around throughout the day whilst we're actually working so that we can get the, the, the energies to flow through our bodies. And we've talked a lot about adaptation um, um, a lot with, 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 with the things that we've been talking about and myself as well in terms of the health and well-being of a, of a um, clinic in Sheffield I see a lot of data I see a lot of clients face to face I was seeing or I do see clients through video conferencing they've been using Zoom, Skype and various other platforms for a number of years uh, to, to work with certain clients but as some of them already mentioned as well, that in, even in, in my industry, or some people, when it comes to well-being and coaching, most people want to see you face-to-face. Mm -hmm. I always try to tell people or talk to, discuss with people that now we can do things remotely as well, just as effective. Um, mm -hmm. And so what I've been doing with some people is just trial into it, even with treatments because sometimes we've got chiropractors osteopaths and physios who work hands-on and what i'm able to do with certain clients is work um through um holistic through hypnotherapy hands-on using reiki and do this over the phone and also do this through zoom as well and it can be equally as powerful because um it's the it's the words that we use and if we use words in specific ways because in terms of communication we're either audio, we're either visual, we see things and we react and respond visually. We're either kinesthetic, we want hands-on, or some people, you know, um, want, you know, um, or um, like to hear things. But when you combine it together, especially when you're working in holistically in, in, in terms of well-being, um, it can be very, it can be extremely powerful. Over, I just want to just share with you some of the sort of things that I've been helping. Um, many of my clients uh, remotely um, oh. and also um, hopefully this will, 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 will work with yourself as well as, for, as the first part of what I'm going to share with you. Then the second part I'm going to give you some exercises as well. <laughs> Nothing too strenuous guys, so don't <laughs> worry. Don't worry. Any of you, have any of you had um, acupuncture before? Yeah. Yeah, just raise your hands. Anyway, acupuncture before. Well, I don't do acupuncture, but I do something called Tweenar. And Tweenar is some sort of Chinese, it's a Chinese um, technique. Um, and with this Chinese technique, there are various points around the body, um, acupressure points. There's over 360 points around the body. And if you were to press or uh, palpate certain areas, this can improve the energy flow 
Um, and what I'm going to do at the end of this talk, I'm going, to get, I'm going to show you three areas in the body which you can do for yourself and also members of family or your loved ones by pressing and palpating those areas over a period of time. This will improve their anxiety and reduce their stress. Who would like that? Yeah, sounds good to me. Yeah. So, but first and foremost, I'm just going to start with just give, giving you um, a couple of, t t share with you a few tips um, that I've um, been um, sharing with, with some of my clients. And a couple, again, some of these speakers have talked about this already in regards to not listening to the news. And that's just not BBC news. Um, it's all this sort of on the news channels. Yes, we do need to understand and know what we can avoid, you know, what, you know, what, what uh, restrictions have been imposed on us. We also need to know, you know, if there's anything significantly changed as well. But what you find is, though, that if we start um, fixating on what's going on in Italy and what's going on in Spain and seeing how the authorities over there are struggling to cope with a lot of what's going on, um, too much of that over a period of time can be quite debilitating. Because one of the things about the subconscious mind is that um, we, we are very resilient and we are very resourceful. Our ancestors gave us that ability many years ago. And a lot of people, a lot of us aren't actually aware of it. Um, but, or, and the reasons why we've got that resilience is because a lot of our, you know, ancestors, you know, they might work five, walk five, ten miles a day. And working five, ten miles a day to hunt and look for food. Many of them are actually, you know, they know they're not going to come back. And so we've got this resilience, we've got this inbuilt resilience internally inside of ourselves. Um, and but by looking at a lot of the times a lot of the negative things we're taken away from that sort of resilience and one of the things that um, society has changed and the way that things have changed at the moment in time is the things that we used to do in regards to going to the gym um you know going for a beer after work um in meeting you know every last thursday in the month at rsvip and doing mm -hmm. lots of other things all those things um, have become ways in which we deal with day-to-day -day life and, uh, and it's part of that catharsis. I play football, all the different things that we used to do to get away from work. And so now all that is gone. Yeah. It's all gone. And so now uh, we're having to work hard, work smart and create um, um, visions and create this new norm that we were moving towards and start to think about things that we need to do in order to, to make sure that we don't become negative or depressed or too, too anxious, so to speak. So that's the first thing I wanted to sort of share with yourselves. Secondly, is also to find something of interest, things that you like doing. Um, many of the clients, you know, I've gone through this with them over this last week. Sometimes we've, we, you know, how many times we've been on holiday and uh, we haven't finished the book and we've put it away because we've gone back into work and we haven't got time to um, pick that up again. Now we've got that time. And so it's looking around that. Sometimes people have gone out and bought items on QVC and it's in the garage or it's in one of the spare rooms or so. Now we've got the time to, 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 to bring those out and use that and also to uh, embrace um, the sort of things that we haven't done in the past. Um, and sometimes, you know, and also certain interests outside of, uh, uh, of work or sometimes interests that we think of what we, that we want to do. Again, one of my clients we talked to um, yesterday, uh, she's going to start to learn to speak Italian. Um, and it's something that's been on the back burner for years. So there's so many things that, um, in the in you know normally mm -hmm. as you see this we're coming up quite a lot that we would actually do but now we've got that time and it's the kind of like utilizing the time and for example I remember I was coming in from uh, well I was not coming in from work actually I was working from home and I was thinking to myself right then um, I, I was doing all my calls working with my clients doing all the things I'd normally do throughout the day. And I was managing to get a lot of the things done. And then I had time to cook uh, rather than put something in the microwave. 
I remember sat there and I did this um, Facebook Live with lots of, uh, you know, with some friends and family and said, you realize that a lot of the things that I was able to do in that day, I actually managed to do it. Whereas ordinarily I'd have been coming in from home and he'd be on the computer writing emails and doing quotes or doing various other things and creating a to-do list for the following day, which then goes another day. But in actual fact, I'm now finding that that extra time that I'm able to get through a lot of the things that I wouldn't have already done, you know, which is pretty, you know, and, and you know, feeling really good about it. And so that was quite nice. So oh, the third tip I was going to, to, to share with yourself as well is the, is all the importance. Uh, and probably this is the biggest one, I would say, in my opinion, is the importance of um, keeping to your routine. The importance of keeping to a routine, and if you haven't got one, is to create one. Mm -hmm. Because we've gone, we're going through a huge shift. And normally, you know, I don't know about yourself, but normally I'd get up in the morning, have breakfast, and I'd already have sort of like uh, my routine, whereas I was already be doing these various aff affirmations in the morning about mindfulness and what am I going to be grateful for and have an intention uh, for the day. Um, but even that, I'm having to double up on my efforts on that to make sure that I keep, keep to that. And then it's a routine of going into work, or having a, a space in the house which I'll use for work, and then having various um, breaks throughout the day, uh, and, and 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 having that sort of um, routine and, and you know throughout the day and every day. And I think it's important to have this routine because it's so easy now. And I think again, some of the other you know um, some speakers might have talked about this. For this this week as such, this week as such, we're in transition, and it's going to take, in my opinion, a few weeks for us all to sort of like settle down. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got different groups, you know. We've got the you know your partner, your loved ones, your uh, um, various people in in same the sharing the same space for a long period of time. Yes, it's a house, it's a home, but most of the time, you know, you get in the morning. There's that rush to have breakfast, to get out of the, you know, to get out of the, the, the house, to get the tube, to get the bus, dropping people off to get to school, all that's changed. And now there's been a huge shift in terms of, it's a different structure, it's a different routine. And it takes some planning and it takes effort. And many people just um, roll out, you know, um, get up in the morning, not set the alarm, and then just crack on. But it's key, critical to, you know, as a unit, as a family, to have that routine in terms of who's going to be going to school in, who's going to be working, what room we're going to be working in, what time should we have lunch, should we sit down and have lunch together? You know, a lot of times families will be struggling to get together late in the evening. So it's a great opportunity, you know, in the day, it's okay then. You do some homeschooling with, you know, with your children. I'll work in this room. You work in that room. Let's have some boundaries where, you know, you, you, can, you can do the coffee run or the tea run, you know, or the juice. Um, and then we can come together at lunchtime and, 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 and get through the day. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be as prescriptive as that. But the key thing is that we still need to set those goals. And we've talked about, you know, how we're going to, you know, in terms of coming out of that and what the new norm's gonna look like. But overall, it's a case if we can set things up now, we can make those changes now, um, get ourselves into, um, in, into a routine. This is going to put us in good stead for, for, for now, and also for tomorrow, because many people won't be thinking of that. They're just looking at, ah, oh, okay, then I'm working from home. Um, this, let's just crack on with it. But when they go back to work, the work will have changed, people have changed, views and attitudes have changed because we, you know, we talked about Maslow's hierarchy of needs. I think the first bit might be Matt been talking about. And many people go to work mm -hmm. um, because, it, because of that, um, the, 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 the comfort of being around other people. But when they do go back to work, we eventually go back to the work, those people, the, the conversations that they used to have, you know, they, will have changed because we'll have missed it. You know, it would have been a month, two months, three months, and they've gone. 
um, those sort of synergies, the conversations, the office politics, all that. It might, it might be a good thing for lots of organizations. And also some companies, and we've heard it already, you know, some people, you know, companies are laying people off, they might go back to work, or at the end, so actually, some, money, some bosses might say, do you know what, um, we're gonna start, you know, um, we saved all this money for the rents and computer systems and everything. Let's just have everybody working from home. And then what's gonna happen then? So while uh, working with my clients and business leaders and people I'm working around is in terms of, rather than just wait to see what happens in the future, mm. start to plan now. Mm. You know, like you know, start to plan now. And even with some of my um, business clients and friend, you know, clients, um, private clients as well, who at the start of the year, we created sort of like vision boards and created, um, um, you know, six, you know, plans. And I know that one of the speakers talked about, plan, we, 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 you know, planning by a week, planning by a month, all the rest of it. The same to my clients, exactly the same thing. Look at your plans that we started out at the start of the year and start to rewrite them rewrite them based on the new norm in terms of how we can serve our clients better how we can help them with their sort of like well-being and um and 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 rather than coming out of it being a shock thinking oh shit what shall i do now we've programmed our mind because our mind needs to know what it's going to do in the future at the moment time is just thinking of things of what we used to do and what's happened in the past it's now all about um, taking stock of the situation, um, taking a deep breath, starting to put some you know, plans into place, and take, you know, and moving and, and moving forward from there. Okay. The final thing I want to share with you is um, just a few little exercises that we can actually do. Uh, can you all see my? Can you all see my uh, my hand? Yeah. Okay. Oh, Okay, I just got my left hand in front of me. You all can just put your left hand up and just take your, with you and just have you put your right hand in the air. And what I want you to do, just first of all, is just to take your, your middle finger and place it into the center of your palm. Use your left hand. That's it. Yeah, your left. Yes, your left, left and right. Yeah, this is the left. Yeah. Okay. And just there where your, your, your finger is there. I just then want you to take your thumb and just place it um, immediately there as well. Okay. I just want you just to press down on this area here and just palpate it. And just, and just rotate your thumb until you feel a little bit of uh, resistance in there. You might feel a little bit of pain. Um, and in this area here, this... <laughs> um, and not all, there, Mickey. <laughs> yeah, you might feel a little bit of tingling as well. <laughs> I might feel a little tingling as well. And what we're doing here, we're actually calming the mind. This is brilliant for anxiety, calming the mind, people who are stressed or feel a little anxious. And if we do to this, and we can do this for other people as well, we can also do this for ourselves. And if you to do this for about, and every time you rotate, that's called a palpation. It doesn't really matter if you do it um, you know, from left to right or right to left, but doing this over a period of time is very sort of, is very calming and very relaxing. The second one that I'm going to show you, again, we can stay with it. And we can do, and we do what we're doing here, I'm just gonna work on the left hand. We, can, we also can do this with the right as well in the same sort of areas. But just to recap, it's where your middle finger is. Just bring it back into the center of your palm and where it touches the palm, where it touches your hand there, that's the area in which we actually palpate. Okay, cool. Okay, and, then, and, um, and this affects the, the end of the mind. The second one that I'm going to um, show you, um, again, just hold your left hand in here. And I just want you to use, it can be, it doesn't matter which, hat, which um, finger you use or your thumb, just in the center of the, your wrist, in the crease, just the center of your wrist there. Um, again, there's a powerful point just in there. And again, exactly the same. Just rotate uh, your thumb or your finger in that area. And again, you might just, just to do it um, with a little bit of light pressure. Uh, it doesn't matter whether you do it, rotate from the left or right or right to the left. And again, normally I would work and do this with somebody sometimes for about a minute or two. 
sometimes up to about two or three hundred pound potions. Again, this is actually brilliant to calm the mind and uh, is calm the mind. Also, it's slightly from um, slightly um, on the same on the same crease. Sorry, on the same crease of the wrist. If you just follow the your finger, your thumb down to the side of your um, your side of your wrist, just here. Uh, there's a little dentate. There's a little dentation just here, and so on the wrist, at the edge of your arm, just into here. Um, again, we can just rotate the thumb or the finger into this area, and again we can do this for 100, 200 um, rotations, either to the left or right. Again, this is a very powerful point. Again, to obviously just to calm the nerves, calm the minds and relax the mind. So anybody you know that might be suffering with anxiety, worry or anger, this is really good for those sort of areas. And for those people who are uh, into um, chi and energy and everything, this point here which we're actually palpated is known as H7 which is for the heart and this point here is P8 uh, which is uh, the pericardian and this point here is um, P7 pericardian. And these points run all the way up the arm, all the way into the, into the heart area here. That's why it's good for calming the heart, relaxing the mind, and just expressing everything. Fantastic. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. That was really interesting. Thank you so much. Now, just to time check, it is now a minute to eight. So a few people have left to go and clap the NHS. So if anybody else wants to do that, because we do still have, Eva's going to hop on to do uh, her three tips on healthy eating for about five minutes. And then Lisa is just going to do another five minutes afterwards on um, activities and entertainment. And then we're done. So if everybody wants to hop off and do the clap and then pop back in a couple of minutes, um, then um, meet you back here in two. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> Hi. Hi, Dad. Hello. That was that was <laughs> how incredible. amazing was that? I know. That was a real feel-good moment, wasn't it, everyone? Yeah emotional to be honest yeah definitely was it <laughs> was there a lot of people doing it on your street yeah, yeah. hanging out windows and, and yeah. yeah yeah i could hear people cheering in the distance and yeah we heard the whoops and hollers and thought yeah what's happening i'm in mapley right now we're quite high up so we can see all across nottingham and i think they were making some of the lights blue as well weren't they yes in honor yeah. of them so we could see see the blue yeah from where we are how lovely our street went mental. 
Did it? Did you have a street party for two minutes? Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you what, when all this is finished, we will be having a massive street party. I think we? we will, yeah. I think people are going to overcompensate on the alcohol, aren't they? And they might actually, <laughs> I think they'll Absolutely. end up back in hospital. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so I think we've got most people back that were left. Um, so we've got, is, is Eva there at all? Hi, Eva. Um, um, don't know if she is. You unmute Eva. In yeah, fact, can... tell you what I might need to do. I might need to just mute everybody and then unmute you again. So just... Yeah, that's fine. Do what you need to do. Okay, Eva, you're, the, you're, you're uh, unmuted. If you are there, but you have no camera. What we'll do is we'll jump to Lisa because I don't think Eve is back from a clap yet. So we'll. Cause she lives, I know She's she lives in the penthouse. <laughs> she lives in a penthouse in our room, so it might take her a while to get back up the stairs. There's no lift in her building. Oh, here she is. <laughs> oh, there she is. Right. Hi. I think you're right. Right. <laughs> so Eva is from Whole Food Warrior. She is a registered nutritionist, friend, a good friend of mine. She's sorted me out no end over the years in my health journey. I know she's been sorting Victoria out as well, um, and, and helping us juice and eat healthy and immune boosting and all of that. So and now is the time really for us to really take care of our health, obviously, and to keep our immune system um, in in good health as much as possible. So um, she's going to share some tips with us on how we can do that. So over to you, Eva. Thank you. Thanks for having me on here. Um, so I'm a brand registered nutritionist and for any of you that actually do like healthy recipes, everything I do is on foodwarrior.co.uk um, or the same for Instagram. Um, in terms of keeping healthy whilst this is going on, I'm going to keep it really, really succinct. The biggest thing to consider is nutrients. So where are your nutrients coming from? Usually it's from veg. We need 10 portions a day. Um, conversely, the biggest threat at the moment, aside from the obvious coronavirus, is actually the snack cupboard. Um, <laughs> if, you can put, if you can put a lock on that, I know everyone I'm talking to at the moment, their biggest problem is just like, oh, um, so I've been out for half an hour and then the other time I've just spent eating crisps or ice cream <laughs> or chocolate, which is delicious. But you've got to limit how much you're snacking. Um, which brings me to my third point very nicely. The biggest problem I have with my clients for keeping on track with nutrition is not having enough time. Guess what? We have all the time in the world right now. Make sure your freezer's stocked, get batch cooking, and you can shove a few extra meals for when we are back on track and when we are back in work. Make them nutritious, so lots of veg, and that is literally it. Oh, amazing. <laughs> that was a quick overview. Thank you, Eva. <laughs> um, I know just to point on something as well about smoothies, because you're a bit of a smoothie queen, aren't you? I know you love those and you've got me into those recently. Would you advise that people, if they're not already having smoothies daily, to get onto those, those as well at the moment, if they can? You know, smoothies are just a really easy way to get all of the nutrients in. So if you think about having 10 portions of veg a day, really in a smoothie, you can probably throw five in and have it over and done with in the morning. Yeah. Um, so things like handfuls of spinach and frozen berries and then lots of different seeds and some protein. It's just yeah. a nice, easy way to get loads of nutrients in. Definitely. And I, I have the Super Boo smoothies at the moment in the morning. Um, and they keep me going all throughout the day. They're so filling, but I uh, put my protein in there. I'm not a cook, so I don't often, um, well, I, I've got no excuse now, really. I should, but um, if I don't have time to home cook, then at least I know I've had my smoothie for the day with everything that I need in it. And it's okay to use frozen, frozen um, fruit and vegetables, right? 100%. Just to address uh, the can you have a cake smoothie, very funny, but <laughs> we do not want to ruin cake that way. Matt. It's too good. Just eat the cake. I was <laughs> just trying to help Mark out, you know, like he was just literally like we were losing him for a second. So I thought, uh, <laughs> just kind of bring him back. <laughs> cake is life. Can I just say something that's keeping me going through this? It's Eva's juice, Eva's juice that you did mm. for me because mm. I couldn't do my own juice. 
Eva oh. created me these cubes. So they're like ice cubes of celery juice, weren't they? I don't know what you put in them. Delightful. But every morning I'm eating these like an ice pop, right? So it's mm-hmm. like a cube of ice filled with celery and goodness. And it's amazing. It's you an should, easier way of eating them. drinking juice, right? Yeah, you should, you should just sell those during the coronavirus and deliver them to everybody's doors. They're amazing. Yeah. That's a sure, uh, sure fire way to uh, make sure it spreads. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know how you do it. I don't know how, but they're just amazing. Absolutely, yeah. No, I'm a big smoothie fan. And Eva does your smoothie demonstrations, don't you, at some of your... Because uh, Eva, I don't know if you know, but she's not only a nutritionist, but she does a lot of food demonstrations across the country at various food shows as well. So she's done big ones like Chatsworth and all sort, um, you know, sharing the stage with some big names, really, you know, Mary Berry, Paul Hollywood. I could name drop all day. Um, but yeah, uh, I'll do it because she won't do it. But yeah, she, she, you know, we don't know what's happening with this season, obviously, at the moment with the outbreak. And I imagine it's going to start and be delayed. But when it does finally get here later on in the year, I'm sure Eva will be on stage doing some shows. So if you want to find out about where she is, later on in the year or if you want to talk to Eva one-to-one for consultations get a bit of advice about any of your personal health um where can they find you Eva on wholefoodwarrior.co.uk but thank you for that great thank you thanks for joining us tonight and for sharing your expertise we are running over a little bit guys so we've got one more speaker for us and then we'll call it a night because it has been a a long one tonight um, and uh, thank you for the last one to be everybody that's still left and the last one standing I'm very grateful for you to still be here and for Matt behind the scenes to still be here running the show thanks Matt um, so I'd like to introduce for our last speaker tonight then that's Lisa Douglas from Things to Do in Nottinghamshire now uh, Lisa uh, a good friend of mine has been um, running the business for quite some time now you can find her she's got her own website and things to do in nottinghamshire.co.uk I believe she might correct me on that um, oh, who's that I don't know I can hear something somebody hang on I'm gonna mute I I actually think it was it might have been you Eva I don't know is it you anyway right hang on where's Lisa Lisa is unmuted. Here she is. <laughs> this is why I have the power. It's so, so exciting. Anyone, anyone putting media on? We've just heard from Mike. No, no more media for a while. Let's just no, no. switch the news off right Let's now. Let's do that. So Lisa's going to speak to us. Normally Lisa will tell us what to do, what activities are going off in Nottinghamshire, where we can go, heritage centres, what's on. Um, but right now we can't go out. So what have you got for us, Lisa, that we can do while we're at home? Well, good evening, everybody. I'm going to make this quite brief because I know it has been a long evening for everybody. Um, uh, I, I, what I love about this whole thing is the way that people are getting on board with um, sharing ideas. And if you go on social media, which um, is what I spend my whole day doing, there's just so many fantastic ideas about things that you can do when you're at home, either you know adults or with your children. I mean, I've, I've been thrown into a situation now where my two children have been um, are now being homeschooled. Although I say they're being homeschooled, I'm not schooling them, but I am having to help them out with their with full day's lessons that the teachers are setting them, which is quite hilarious considering I can hardly count to 50 in, um, in, in numbers. But um, yeah, it's, it's a real learning curve with everything. But, but so there's some really great things that you can do if you're staying at home. I mean, you can do online wine tasting, which I understand you did yesterday, Fiona. did that last night. It was amazing. Thank you, Debbie. I think Debbie's on here now. Um, yeah, I would highly recommend it. Tell us, tell us a little bit about it because I've never done it, but I'm very tempted. Okay, so Debbie um, is from the Knox Derby Wine School. Um, She um, is a member of RSVIP, you may have met her. She um, basically is a wine expert, WSET registered and all of that. Um, In fact, my husband did his exams with her and he is now, um, thinks he's a sommelier. Um, (laughs) um, um, So the, the online wine tasting is basically, she's now taking, she normally does it 
obviously face to face, she runs wine tasting events, but she's decided to take it online. So she very quickly adapted her business to do face or live streams. Um, she asked at the moment, I think it's a five pound donation per person through a link. Um, and it's on Wednesdays and Friday evenings at 8 p.m. And you can just tune in from the comfort of your own home. Um, log on to, if you follow Not Starby Wine on her Facebook page, she will announce which wines you need to buy in in advance. And you can order those online and she recommends places where you can buy that to get it delivered to your door in advance as well. So you might not have time for tomorrow night, obviously, but if you prepare, have a look what, I think it's Prosecco and Chianti for um, tomorrow night, but she'll also announce what the wine is for next Wednesday. So you've got time to maybe get some on order um, and then take part. It's about an hour um, and it's great fun. debbie has got a great sense of humour. We were, we were in stitches the whole time um, and we got some cheese in as well. So we, we really had a nice little, uh, well, just us two really, me and Tim, we had a right old giggle. Highly recommend. Great idea. And something which also could be carried on after this is all over as well. Definitely. Oh, without a doubt. Okay, well, there's lots of other things you can do. As I was saying to Vicky last week, you could visit an online museum. Um, there's so many of them are now offering virtual tours. So you can go to the British Museum in London or the Guggenheim Museum in New York without even leaving your chair. Just, you know, go onto the internet and search for online museums. It's really really interesting thing to do Amazing. and it's something for kids to do as well to have a look around because these are places you might never be able to visit but you know where do we find easy. those then lisa well if you go on to google and just search for virtual online museums you right. get a whole thing up, um with, with links straight to them so it's ever so easy um i don't know if any of you are trying to keep up with joe wicks and his daily torture reviews he <laughs> disguises pe but that's one of my daughter's um, uh, school, part of the school curriculum. So I've been doing that with her and cursing him every morning. But it's, it's definitely not just the kids. That's something that adults can do as well. So that gets you, you know, stay off to a good start with a bit of PE. Um, mm. Researching your family tree. Something as simple as that. You can get mm. it at ancestry.com for 14 days. Just, you know, don't meant to cancel if you don't want to carry on. But that's something that people really get into. And, um, you know, it's, it's about £10 a month going on from there. So, again, it's not massively expensive if, if you know, if that's something that really grabs your, your fancy. Mm. Um, this is something I was thinking about. When was the last time you played a board game with your family? I mean, yeah. we've got tons of them downstairs. Mm. My children would rather sit on their computers in their bedrooms and play separately. But I'm going to get them all together on Saturday night, maybe, and have, like, a proper family evening. They're yeah. Going to Pizza, few board games, you know, a bit of get together, a bit of monopoly, a bit of an argument, which always goes with monopoly in our hands. Great idea. Yeah, it's the perfect opportunity, really, this is to spend some family time together mm. and, and, and make memories together, I think, as well. So it's not always looking at it as a bad thing that's happening. It is bad, it's awful, but we have to, you know, pick out the really positive aspects of it as well and, you know, get your family together and do things that you perhaps wouldn't normally do. Mm. Um, do you want some more? Are we running out of time? Yeah, no, yeah, no. You keep, a couple more would be great. Okay, back up your phone pictures. I never do this. Upload them to your PC, sort them out, and then take them off your phone and make new memories. I mean, I, if I ever lose my phone, I mean, I'm just going to lose everything because I never back them up. But, you know, that's something that you can do. Um, Those photo books you can get are great, aren't they? Absolutely, that's that's another really nice thing, and um, I think they're quite easy to access online as well these days. Yeah. Also, one thing, if it's all getting a bit on top of you, I know we've talked about mindfulness and well-being and stuff, but it is important to take a moment for yourself as well, especially if you've got kids here and you're trying to, you know, keep them occupied during the day. Have a pamper evening. You know, search for all your comments for all those smellies that you've received over the years and thought, oh my gosh, what are we going to do with those? Have a bubbly bath, you know, do put a face mask on. Um, you know, find a free online meditation or and yoga courses. There's plenty of them about. They're free. You know, find something to do. Keep in touch with your family and friends. Have a, you know, have a pee session or a yoga session at two o'clock every day and get a group of your friends together online. It's, it's, there's so much that you can do with the technology that's out there. 
Absolutely. No, thank you, Lisa. So really great ideas there, really creative ideas. And I think the thing that you everyone will pick out from this is that it's about doing things that we've been meaning to do for a while that are, we see as maybe menial tasks that are on the list, but they get pushed to the bottom of the list because we're all so busy all the time. And I think creating things like photo books is something that can take quite a while and you need to concentrate on that and sit and really focus. But now we've got that, you know, we've got a bit of time, we're at home, we can perhaps take the time to do that so out of this again is another silver lining really that we can perhaps do these things spending time with family like you quite rightly said um a lot of online things you mentioned about exercise the joe wicks i've not done myself but one of our members leanne cordingly from all you yoga is is now taking her yoga classes online uh, through a subscription i believe she's starting it at 20 pounds a month um, so look up all you yoga if you want to if you've got any yogis on here that are interested or anyone knows anyone deb's yoga is another one um deb's uh, sorry from do yoga um, she's doing a similar thing at the moment as well through facebook so and and uh, zoom so people are, are, are gradually moving over aren't they to online like we've been speaking about throughout the evening the whole time this is what it's about it's about adaptation um, so thank you very much, uh, Lisa, for, for that. And um, thank you to everybody else as well, to all of our members. Like I say, we are the last ones standing. <laughs> it's been a long night, but we're hardcore. So well done. And thank you ever so much for joining us. Um, and I'm sure we'll do this again. You know, this is the first one. It's a learning curve for us. So, um, oh, background noise again. Right, hang on. I just unmuted everyone because I thought um uh that there would be a nice time for everyone to chat but you, you somebody's still got the media on so that's not oh it's okay it's okay cam. uh just on that front um fiona if i may if yeah, anyone has any feedback or anyone um has any suggestions as to how perhaps uh, we can make these better please uh let us know i uh I, th I think it's been fab but one thing i've realized is like it's really hard to speak for like five or ten minutes <laughs> at least for me anyway yeah <laughs> so that's one thing i'm learning um, yeah, yeah. but yeah if there's anybody else who's got any feedback like that would be super because i know fiona wants to make these as, as as brilliant as possible yeah absolutely and you know what well, feedback is welcome this is our first one so obviously you know it's a learning curve for all of us in terms of you know time management indeed for that that you know we want to try and keep it tight we wanted to fit in as much as possible for the first one but from here they'll only get better so you know your your feedback is valued for that reason um and we'll keep connecting keep connecting on our new linkedin group if you're not on there look up for look it up as well it's our new members linkedin group yes owen Sorry, yes. uh, can I just say thank you guys? You've oh, been pleasure. Fantastic. The speakers have been awesome, even Steve with his changing background. I know! Been <laughs> I've been laughing all uh, the way through it, that. <laughs> <laughs> it's obviously been like a tough, tough couple of weeks, and I'm quite a positive person anyway, but have felt yeah. like, well, yeah, tough times this last couple of yeah. weeks. But to just come on here and just have people talking about positive aspects from in the different things and the business side and ways of viewing things i've written so many notes and oh, yeah, just that's really good to it. so thank you for letting me get fantastic crash. oh no no pleasure thank you so much for joining us owen and say hi to lucy as well we'll do. Um, we'll do. and yeah we'll we'll hopefully we'll hopefully i mean it, it it's it's a really super positive thing to say and probably not realistic that we'll probably be gathering together at the end of next month for our event it'll probably take longer than that so we'll probably be here again this time next month but we'll we'll look at swapping and changing a few things around to improve the format um, and hopefully we'll see you all back here with some more people this time next month if not at the event <laughs> itself <laughs> but um cheers everybody and have a great rest of evening thank, thank you guys you. Bye. Bye. thank you bye